Hi, welcome to Byline TV. My name's Dawn Butler. I'm the Member of Parliament for Brent Central. And today we're going to talk about police stops. Black people are nine times more likely to be stopped and searched, six times more likely to be stopped whilst driving, and if restrained, seven times more likely to die in custody. There are 5.5 million stops every year in the UK. Some of you may know that I've been stopped a couple of times and in 2020, I recorded the incident. And just a couple of weeks later, there was another major stop by professional athletes. And I'm joined today by Ricardo Dos Santos. Welcome. And thank you so much for joining me today, Ricardo. Hello, hello. So your stop, uh, went viral. Yes. Uh, it was stopped with you and Bianca. Yeah. And your little boy, who was just three months. Three months at the time, yeah. Years old at the time. It was quite a dramatic uh, stop. Yeah. Tell me, tell me a bit more about it. Well, well, it's not the first. Let's just actually. It's almost like I feel like I'm jumping the gun. Saying, tell me about that stop. But actually, yeah, you've been it, stopped loads of times. Loads of times prior to that, but that was one of the first big ones. Um, so. Um, it was 3rd of July, 2020. We had just finished training and we decided to go out for dinner because it was the day that the restaurant opened pre-first lockdown. You were looking, this is something you were looking for? Yes, to. yes. be a nice... Yeah, a nice evening, go out to eat. Um, probably about 10 minutes from home. Um, I pointed out to Bianca that there was um, a TSG van that she's never seen one before. She had, she had never, you know, had no... It's a TSG van for it's, people it's, watching. Um, it's the big blue police vans that mm. drive around. They usually go to uh, terrorist things, I think. Right. They, they don't do regular stops. Um, and I told her that we got, I got put, me, myself and my friend got pulled over six weeks prior by one of those. So she was all like, oh, wow. In the wow. same car? In the same car, so, yeah. Right. So she was like, oh, she's never seen that. We, Okay, and then we just continue driving. And as we approached my house, um, I, I noticed that there was, there was one coming in the opposite direction. Right. And they, uh, there's a car in front of me that indicated to turn right. Yeah. They let that car turn right, which kind of made me think, no one in London lets anybody through. <laughs> you know, driving in London, every, everybody's always... In a rush, yeah. no, no matter what, you're always in a rush. You, you don't let people go through when there's nothing stopping you from going. Yeah. And then when I indicated, they also flashed me to go. And I said, there's, there's something really fishy about this. And I said to Bianca, um, be careful, because I think they're going to follow us. Mm -hmm. She was like, impossible, impossible. And seconds later, they turned left into the same road that I, that, that I turned right into. And I was like, you know what? The lights are not on, they're probably just, you know... Doing, you, yeah. intimidating you. But I said, you know what, I'm going to turn right down this road because this is a road where nobody drives down. Mm. Only people from the area know this road. Mm. It's a very, very narrow road. And when I came off that road and went back onto the main road, I noticed that they followed and I was like, OK... They're definitely They're following. definitely following us. Right. Um, so I decided to, you know, I said, no, I'm not, I've not done anything wrong. The lights are not on. Mm. I'm going to continue going home. Did you feel nervous? Um, a little bit, because I didn't know what I was getting followed for. Mm. Were you speeding? No. I mean, it, it's a tight road. It, it's impossible you to do. Speed. Yeah, it's impossible to do more than 20 or 30 miles an hour. So, and you had your baby in the car. Yeah, my three months old. I'm not going to yeah. do anything stupid in Steve. danger, yeah. in, in danger his life or myself or anybody else's. Um, after that, they, they, because the gap widened, they sped up to catch up to me and they managed to catch up and they tried to cut in front of me to pull me over. And I was like, I'm not going to stop here because if a it's car dangerous. comes and hits us, yeah. you know, it's, it's me. Yeah. So I continued on a street and a half where I lived yeah. and I stopped outside there, unlocked the car door and I waited. And you were waiting for the police? Yeah. Literally. I, outside of my house right. and I thought my, my other cars there they're gonna eventually see that the number plates are very similar right. 
they're going to see that the address of my driver license is the address of my house here. Right. So it'll probably be a thing where, oh, we just check in and right. story's finished. In your mind, you thought this will make sense to the police. Yeah. When they check, they will see you live on Ramsey Street. Yeah. Your your driving license says Ramsey Street, so therefore it's fine. Yeah, and, and the other car was parked right in front of them. That's also registered to Ramsey Street. Yeah, yeah. You don't live on Ramsey Street, yeah, by the way. But yeah. yeah. So um, when they uh, pulled up beside us, within seven seconds of them pulling up, they had the diamond cutters and the uh, batons ready on my side of the door, trying to force the door open and trying to smash the glass. And that's you when... Unlock the door. So w once I saw the diamond cutters, when I said, you know what, let me... I'm, I'm going to have to step out because if glass shatters everywhere... But your three-month-old baby... Yeah. On the car. So I decided to um, open the door and that's when they grabbed me, pulled me up on a pillar, smashed my chest into a pillar. And then first thing they said to me was that they smell cannabis on me, mm. which um, I found very funny because I've never smoked in my life. You're a professional athlete. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Your body's a temple. Athlete. Yeah, I, we get tested so often. Yeah. And for someone to say that they can smell cannabis on me, it's like, yeah. oh, I mean, come yeah. on. Out of everything that you could have said to an athlete, well, it just doesn't make sense. Nine out of ten times, that's what police use. Yeah. I mean, some of it is actually also psychosomatic yeah. because they're so used to saying it, they actually believe, believe in their head yeah. that they can smell cannabis every time they see a black person because they have that mental association. Yeah. It's, it's problematic. After that, they, they said, you know, we are we're stopping you because um, dangerous area, we suspect your car to be involved in drugs and weapon dealing. And I was like, oh, so really? Smell of cannabis, drugs and drugs weapons. And weapon. Yes. Okay. That was, that was the reason for the stop. Right. That was from what I heard of, what was written on the, on, on the form. Right. Drugs and weapons. Right. Uh, fast forward um, two days, right. I found out that I was driving the wrong side of the road and speeding. Right. So the story no, changed. Yes. With no mention of the drugs, no mention of the weapons, no mention of the smell of right. cannabis. Okay. And that's when, obviously, um, Linford then put the video out. Linford Christie? Yeah, Linford Christie is my coach. coach? My, my coach for, for 10 years. Mm. He's, you, I mean, every time I get stopped, I always tell him I've been yeah. stopped. And it, it angers him because it used to happen to him in the 90s. Yeah. Same thing. But when this one happened, he was telling, was shouting at me, telling him to send him the video. Yeah. So he can publicize it yeah i said no no i don't worry about it there's yeah. no need it happened it's gone let us yeah. enjoy our evening and he just got angry i got angry and i said fine yeah. i'm gonna crop the video i'm gonna send you the second half of the video yeah for you and i sent it to him he posted it up with your permission yes with, with my permission it, it i think it had a few million views on social media and the met responded to the video and said don't believe everything you see in a 23 second clip. Wow. So when I saw that, I was and like... And the Met did that themselves. Yes, it's they very, they very similar it. to what happened yeah. uh, to me in terms of how the Met covers each yeah. other's backs all the time. And then by them responded, uh, by them responding, how did that, re how did social media react? Did you get more of a pile on? Did you get racist? Oh, yes. We, we had um, abuse from everyone in the country, well, not everyone, but a lot of people in the country. Yeah. We had abuse from uh, people in America, in um, all corners of the globe. Yeah. People um, with like a, uh, a thin blue line. Yes. Did a lot of yes, those. Yes, a lot of those yes, came yes, from me yes. too. Um, I, I, just, I just said, you, you guys don't know what's yeah. going on. The conspiracy theories as well. Yeah. You know, gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So you were, why I stopped, yeah. that's too, why speeding. I didn't stop. I was speeding, yeah. I was driving on. But I, was, I said, you use common knowledge, you know, it's common sense. I was never, they never charged me for speed. They never charged yeah. me for driving along side yeah. the road. If I was, I would, I'll be penalised. Why do you think people have, are so reluctant to believe? Well, they were. I think now that the Met are in special measures, mm -hmm. I think some people are beginning to see the light, yeah. you might say. It's, um... Why do you think so many people are reluctant to believe how discriminatory stops and searches are in the UK. For them, it's like the police never lies. Mm. What the police says, it's gospel. Mm. It's, you know, it's, 
they will never lie. They're, you know, they're sworn in. They're yeah. the best people in the world. What they say is the truth. Well, if you did, if you, you know, if whatever they say you did, you did it. Yeah. And how do you feel about the police? Um, you're supposed to be safe. Mm. I don't feel safe around them. Mm. I mean, with my previous experiences, I've, you know, um, I've ne never felt safe around them. Mm. And yeah, and that's why I'm fighting to make sure that others don't yeah. feel the same way that I did. Yeah. And you changed your car then after that? Yes. Yeah, so um, a few years later, I decided, you know, it's because I had I'd, I'd been stopped again. Right. Um, so I decided it, it's, it's getting too much now. Yeah. What car did you have? I had a BMW X4 and a Mercedes A-Class. Right. So I said, it's too much because this is the car that they supposedly said it's, you know, it's... I was um, in a BMW yeah, and said, you know... Connected to yeah, whatever. Yeah, dealer's car of choice, yeah. apparently. So I said, let me get a car that doesn't stand out. It's, right. you know, it's becoming very popular now. It's more of an older person car. Right. So me driving... Well, yeah, an old man drive. Yeah, so <laughs> I wanted something that wouldn't... If you look at it, it'll be like, it's not connected to anything. Right. So then I got Bianca a Tesla, then I got myself one. Right. And um, thinking, uh, this, the stops are done, it's over, never going to get pulled over again, unless I do something stupid. Right. Did you start to relax? Yeah, I, I honestly, it kind of, it was like, I'm done with the past, now I can right. just drive, I can chill, I can relax. It's all automated, it yeah. does everything. It's all within legal yes, parameters, yes, yes. it doesn't speed. I, I limit it to... Um, the speed limit, right. so it will never go over the speed limit, right. and um, it stops at red lights, right. and it picks up when the light turns green. It, it picks up to the speed limit. Right. So it's all it's all done throughout the through the car. Right. All we have to do is just stay awake. Right. So and you've done as much as you can yeah. to sort of insulate yourself yeah. against any accusations of doing anything illegal, right? Yeah. In your new car, in yeah. your new old man's car. Yes. <laughs> and and on the fourteenth of August, what happened? Um, I hadn't been out with my friends for a while. They um, forced me out on a night out. So I said, um, yeah, fine, we'll, we'll go. Um, and usually I'm always the driver because I don't drink. Mm -hmm. And I always say, I'd rather me drive than you guys drive because something happens, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I wouldn't feel happy. Because you know you're safe. Yeah. And okay. I don't drink. Don't I'm drink. never going to, if, if I do get pulled over, you know, yeah. they'll they, um, they'll test and they'll... Yeah. I can't system. reiterate enough for all the people, all the abusers and the trolls, that you're a professional athlete. Yeah. Your body's a temple. You don't yeah. drink, you don't no, smoke. Don't smoke, don't do yeah. any of that. Yeah. So we went out. It was very boring. Yeah. We decided to call it a night <laughs> really early. And then I dropped them home. I said, OK, well, I need to go out early in the morning. So let me go Tesla to charge the car. Right. It was just, just, just before 3 a.m. Get there, I took a picture of Chanty Bianca. I've arrived at Tesla, I'm charging the car. Um, you can go sleep and I'll text you in the morning. And then um, I charged it, get back on the A40. How long does it take to charge? 55 minutes. Yeah. Um, get back on the A40. As I'm merging in, I notice a police car. Right. And in my head, it's like, please make sure that the light in front of me turn red mm. so that we don't cross paths. Right. I guess the man upstairs said um, he let it be green yeah. and we ended up crossing paths. And when I emerged in, I saw that one officer looked into the car. Right. And in my head it was like, yeah, it's going to be a long night. Oh, wow. So I, I knew straight away. I was like, this, wow. this is going to be a long night. But I didn't do anything wrong. I continued yeah. the car, you know, it was manoeuvring the way it manoeuvres. Yeah. Um, stopping when they need to stop, yeah. accelerating when they, when, they, when they need to accelerate. So were you on edge? You knew that you knew they were going to get stopped? Um, I was ready. Right. I was ready. You were prepared. It, yeah, if it happened, it happened. If it didn't, I'm going to go home. It's right. fine. And, um, and then fast forward a little bit. They, um, we um, arrive at a traffic light. They pull up behind a Mercedes and I go into the, the first lane. And obviously the Mercedes doesn't take off because you see the police car behind him. Yeah. So he takes off much slower. Yeah. And that kind of widens the gap between myself and the police car. Right. 
Right. So they think with that, I'm probably trying to evade them or whatever. Yeah. And they, they, you can then see them on the video. They pick up. So you've got a video? Yeah. And they get much quicker. Okay. And yeah. Should we watch the video? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. I'm a bit nervous to watch this video, to be honest. I'm not going to lie. So a Tesla, how many cameras does a Tesla have? It has eight. Right. Four are constantly recording. Right. And um, the other four are just for autopilot. Right. And so this is, uh, what time in the morning is this? This was 2.55. 2.55. When the car first picks up. Okay. The police car. Ah, right. Okay. And that's when you start to feel... Yeah. You, you're, you acknowledge that and you're... Yeah. On your guard, like, okay. As, as, as we're driving, you'll see on this angle, um, as I drive past, so that he looks in, Right. But it was the thing that the car was set at a, at a speed. So it goes... It, it goes to the speed. I, it, yeah. I don't do anything. Yeah. So that's, what, 30 miles? Uh, no, there was 40. 40, right? Yeah. And you can just see that it just continues. Yeah. Oh, God, it's so scary. And, um, yeah, it's just... So they continue to... Just from a distance. And, and with here, you can see that, I mean, you and can't see... in other cars. Why don't yeah. they follow the other cars? And normally when it's stuff like this, they're already running the checks. They know yeah, yeah. who's driving. Yeah. They know if it's insured, yeah. if it's not insured. Because yeah. if anything, they would have told me to stop. If, yeah. if the car yeah. wasn't insured, they would have said, yeah. you know, pull over yeah. there and then. It's funny how you know all of this, isn't it? It's funny yeah. how you know what the police are doing. Yeah. Really... And it, it's, it's sad that I do know because yeah. I'm a regular civilian. I yeah. shouldn't know. But that's the, that's, that's yeah. the talk, isn't it? With... with... We're told. So there are other cars there. Yeah, so again, they stop behind the Mercedes in the corner, they're over there. The light turns green. This car actually takes off quicker than I do when, once it turns green. Right. Oh, with, yeah, that car takes off. But because the Mercedes doesn't take off quick ah, enough, right. the gap widens over yeah. there. Yeah. And the police are not letting you out of their sight. Yeah. So as we're a bit further down now, they now went past the Mercedes and trying to catch up. Right. So you can see the brake, I, the, the car brakes because of the lights. Right. They start approaching. Right. They're trying to creep. Right. He looks in and as the light turns green, the car takes off and you can see his car jerking because right. he's changing gears. Right. And again, there's no sirens, no yeah. lights. No lights, no sirens. And your car's automatic. Yeah. They're oh, looking. Oh my goodness. And that's when they turn the lights on. Put the brakes and turn the lights. So, so he, he made sure he looked paused in. It. So I paused it. So, you, so yeah. he made sure he looked in to see who's driving the car. Yeah. And he sees that it's a black guy. Yeah. And as soon as he looks in, he puts his... Uh... They put the light on, yeah. Wow. So it's not like they had the lights on from no. Um, no. a mile back or whatever. So they've done all the checks, all of that. And that's when the car manoeuvres around right. for safety reasons. I, I didn't touch the car. Right. Um, the car is a feature where it prevents an accident, a forward collision. Right. It takes you off the lane. So if somebody stops suddenly in front of you, it your would, car will go Yeah, it'll, it'll go around. Or it, so what it does, it, um, signed, it, the alarms go off right. to get you alert, and right. then it takes you around. Or it'll slam on the brakes, right. whichever one is safer. Mm. The car has now gone back to its normal speed. Right. And it's now... I mean, in my, in my head, I'm like, oh, what the hell's going on? Yeah. Um, I miss a, a, a turning. Right. Because I'm still yes. confused as to what's happening. Yeah. Okay. Um, but there's, an, there's another exit coming up, and I said, you know what? I would rather stop where I know the area properly and where it's safe to do so. Right. So I took over, and every time I changed lanes, I indicated. Right. To allow them to know that I'm not running away, I'm not doing anything, right. I'm driving at the speed limit. And I will stop once I feel safe because, right. they, again, there's there, there's nowhere for me to stop over here. Yeah. And, um, yeah, they just follow. At the time, at the moment, it's only one car. Right. And they've already called in for backup. Wow. But I didn't know at the time. I just, right. I, I just thought it was just the one vehicle. Right. I know this route well. Yeah. I take this route home. And, um, yeah, so, again, there's nowhere for me to stop. And yeah. 
because I've been stopped here before, I said, I'm going to stop exactly where I stopped before. Mm. Um, we're going to continue and then we, they'll come to the car. I'll explain to them if, right. there, if there is something wrong. Right. We'll talk it out and then I'll go about my day and they'll go about theirs. Right. But um, unfortunately, it didn't end like that. Okay. I pull over there, right. put the hazards on, right. and you can see. So these are the two side angles. Right. The officer on the right uh-huh. is the more aggressive one. Right. He, he was ready to do whatever. This officer that was sitting in the back Shh, only on. runs because this Jesus. one runs. Wow. Wow. I'll pause it. Was it? Was it? I'll right. pause it. Okay. He tried to open the door, doesn't know how to open the door. So he kind of, that's when he's about to go take the baton out wow. because he's going to smash the glass because he thinks that the car's locked. Right. So they're opening the door before they've yeah. even come to you. So he, he puts his baton out, puts it back in, and then he's now getting ready. You can see by his stance, he oh changes his stance, get ready to... Oh my God, he looks like he wants to yeah. fight you. This one, I was talking to him, I was saying to him, I'm not going to um, speak to your colleague because he's, he wants to smash the glass and yeah. I'll talk to you. Yeah. He's still standing there, his officer. It's now two other police cars come. He tries to... Is that a gun? Yeah. Is he got, is... Tries to unopen the car door without me knowing. What? And then realises that he can't. What? But then I notice it and I say, you know, I'm, let me just step out. As I step out... What do you think he was trying to do? Why do you think he was trying to open the door without you knowing? Um, I don't know. He probably just dragged me out. Wow. But again, there was no um, warning, no nothing. Yeah. But this one, I, t- I, I told them that, you know, the car is recording. So the, the other two so you knew. you told them it's recording? The, the other two what knew. Did you tell them? I told them because I had a very important competition um, at the end of the week. Okay. So for me, it was my priority is making sure that I'm fit and healthy to compete. Oh, you didn't want them to beat you up? I didn't want anything to happen to me because I wanted to be able to compete. That's the only reason why I told him. Try to go back in the car, he leans up on the car. Right. So I say, you know what? I'm going to go around. Okay. So he's, I'm talking to him, he's like, why are you following me? Oh my God. So now. How many officers are this now? Nine. Jesus. So I go around the car, and now this one I'm calling Bianca because she's in Germany. Oh my God. And he grabs me. Oh my God. So he called Bianca? He had to let her know that I've been stopped. Oh my God. So what she thing? can. Um, she's able to log into the car's cameras and view everything live. Oh, wow. So that's, that's why I call Have it. you talk, spoke, did you speak about this before? Like, is this something that you guys have prepared for? Um, no, it's normally, it's whenever I get pulled over, I call her to let her know I've been pulled over in this location, um, wait for my call. If not, look at the local police stations around the area. Oh my God. So she's, she, she, she knows the procedure. So she knows if, you know, if, if because she was able to view everything mm. live, it, it, it's more calming on her. And when they heard it, it kind of put them more, it, they changed their tone as well. When they knew that there's another it's, eyes um, yeah. on, on what's happening. So as this is happening, he's now, this My officer. stomach is churning. This officer's grabbing me. Mm. His colleague comes, and you'll see, points mm. at the camera and whispers to him and says, the car's recording. Oh, wow. He looks, he lets oh go my of my God. hand. Oh, my God. So that's your, that, that was your laughing. life, that was yeah. your life saving yeah. measure there. The fact that, geez. And then he walks off. Oh I start wow. laughing at him saying, if it wasn't for the cameras, you guys would have done everything and anything. Wow. And wow. Their colleagues come, try to talk and they tell you, no, you've been, he was on the phone. I was like, no, I wasn't on my phone. It, like, and it was, what angered me the most is the demeanour of the officers. They go from standing, arms crossed, yeah. to leaning, leaning up on their cars, playing with their fingernails, yeah. rocking back and forth, because they know that, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is pointless now. Yeah, because they're being recorded, yeah. so they can't do what they want to do. Yeah, and that, that's... Or, or what we think they want yeah. to do. So we, we're just going back and forth, but we're not about another 45 minutes. Right. Then they reached to a point where they said, where I told them I wasn't on my phone, and they said, um, okay, let's disregard the phone. So I said, by you disregarding the phone, you're basically saying you're disregarding the whole stop. 
mm. because the reason for the stop was because of the phone. Yeah. They were like, oh, no, 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 I, I never said that. I was like, but you did. Yeah. And I said, so where do you go from here? If I was on my phone, give me the three points. Yeah. Um, if I wasn't on my phone, what, yeah. what's next? Oh, you know, we can issue you a warning. I was like, by all means, do it. Yeah. Issue me the warning. They're like, can I have your ID? I said, I don't have my, my wallet on me. Mm. Um, I left it with my friend. I forgot it on him. And then that's when they said, oh, um, we, you, you have to carry your wallet, your ID with you. Otherwise, we can um, take you in. And I said, you don't have to carry your ID with you. We're not in a, I mean, yeah, I said, that's not the law. It's uh, the law. Say that. Yeah, you. I said, the law says in the case that you give me a ticket. I have seven days to produce my mm. driver license at any local police station. And then when they realized that I knew what I was talking about, yeah. they didn't like that. Mm. It kind of made them seem like, oh, this, this is a Mr. Yeah. Know-it-all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up a tea. Yeah, and again, the tone changed. And then they start asking them, oh, the car has cameras. How, how does it feel? Or asking me about athletics. Really? Um, how long have I been doing it? And really? So they started to... What, be nice? Yeah. Okay. And then we go off. Wow. And it was only because the cameras is why they changed their tone. Wow. Wow. And that's that. Wow. So since that particular stop, what, what has happened? Um, I put the clips out on social media, mm -hmm. knowing that it would um, yeah. do its rounds. I saw um, one of the clips. I thought it was funny, the clip, actually, the point where yeah. the officer didn't know Sounded how to the... open the door, so then immediately took out... Frustration. Back. Yeah. Um, I knew it wouldn't, um, wouldn't... Not much would come out of it, right. but I wanted them to be transparent. I wanted them to say or show everything, because they, they all have cameras. Yeah release the footage, show yeah. and do, as, as I would have done, yeah. release everything to show, okay, um, if he was on his phone, this, this is the moment where we saw him on yeah. his phone. If he was speeding, this is the moment yeah. where we saw him they speeding. They have to turn on their they have to turn it on, yeah. body-worn video. Yeah. So and the on. car has a uh, desk cam. Well, well so, some of them do, some of them don't, as I'm trying to establish how yeah. many cars, police cars, actually have dash cam cameras, because yeah. apparently hardly any. And that's what they do. Yeah, yeah. Somehow, w w when you need it, they don't have yeah. it. When you don't need it, they have footage exactly. of everything. Yeah. Um, then the then the Met referred itself to the IOPC. Right. We knew what the outcome was because it, was, it wasn't anything as severe. So we got that the IOPC said they're not going to look into it. it. They forwarded it back to the Met, and now the Met is investigating it themselves. Right. And um, yeah. And um. When you were stopped in 2020, uh, those police officers were found guilty of gross misconduct. Yes. And that was your little boy's now three. So that was three years yeah. ago. Yeah. And those officers are still working for the, for the Met police. Yeah, so we, we, um, we, we su suspect the hearing to be um, this year. Right. And... Um, I do believe that they will lose their jobs once everything comes out. So how many cases have you got in the system that, that where you've complained? Uh, four. 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 Yeah, four. Oh, wow. Yeah. And this last case on the 14th of August, 2022, mm -hmm. you said, uh, and I thought it was quite sort of profound, you said you think somebody's going to be killed. Yeah, because the way they um, came up to me, the demeanor, they were very aggressive. They were just, you know, itching to do something, yeah. for something to happen. And when I did my media run a few days later, yeah. um, I did mention, you know, I do believe the way these, these officers are acting, someone somewhere is going to do something that they're going to re regret. Yeah. Um, not hoping what I said was true, yeah. Um, not hoping it will happen yeah. so soon, maybe five, ten years. Yeah. But unfortunately, it happened within three weeks. Yeah. 
And when I heard it, a few people sent me the article saying that somebody had been shot by the police. And my first thought was, that could have been me. Mm. Because it wasn't just a regular police officer. Yeah. It was armed police officers. Yeah. And then the second thought is, what can I do to connect with the family, to, you know, to offer my support, offer my help? Yeah. And um, which I did. After a few weeks I'd calmed down, I contacted um, Chris Cabo's cousin. Right. And um, sent him a message and saying, you know, I mean, if you need to, if you need, if you need to speak, I'm here. Then we met up a few days later, and since then we've been um, in. Um, we've been talking since then. Wow. And um, and before I talk about sort of your charity, you haven't put that video out anywhere, like no. that whole video. Um, thank you for sharing it with me and Byline. Why are you sharing it now? Because. Um, I honestly thought that from the video, even before it happened, yeah. even before I put the, the first three out, that they would put something else out and to show what had happened and how it happened. The police. The police, they, they, would, they would do it. Right. Um, so I sat on it for a while. It's been, what, six months now? Right. And um, I was waiting to hear, we're waiting to see if anything would happen. Um, nothing has come of it. So you. You were hoping that the police would put something out yeah. to say... Because from 20... In the incident in 2020, uh -huh. their reasoning for not posting any video evidence yeah. is because of GD, GDPR. Right. They said there's too many licence plates, there's too many people in the public, they can't blur everybody out, they can't blur everything out. Right. So this one, it was just me. Right. And probably about five cars, right. which is easy to blur out. Right. So I thought, okay, these guys can blur these stuff up because I can do it myself. Yeah. So I, I've, I've been waiting. Were you, were you hoping for the police to do that to prove that you didn't do anything wrong? Yes. Because Isn't that a bit naive, Ricardo? I know, <laughs> I know. You know, it, you, you, you always hope. It's like when you play the lottery, you know yeah. that the chances of, it, of you winning is yeah. very slim. But you still do it. So you were you were hoping that the police would admit yeah. that the stop was unnecessary. Yes. And, and, I mean, and you today have said, you know, you you know, you they were you brushed the hand away, they were trying so you and yourself have, you know, been very open about everything. Mm -hmm. Um why would why would you think the police like you've got four cases outstanding with the police for each stop and you know and that's only in the last five years mm -hmm. you know you've been stopped before, before that, that but yeah. this is just the last five years um why would you think the police will change especially because they've been put in special measures right so i thought you know it's a new there's a new guy's come in he's he wants to supposedly change everything mm. start off we're doing this the right way. Forget what the previous person did. Right. Let's do this right. And then we move forward. And then, and then people can actually start trusting you, you know, little by little. Yeah. But they have to show that I was wrong. So six months later, the police now will have to come back and explain why nine officers stopped you after you went to charge your car yeah because i mean their reason it for for a lot of people they think that the lights were turned on from pre you know from behind me yeah. from miles away and i was evading them yeah but it wasn't it was turned on as they got in front of me right and with no warning after they looked at you after they looked at, in, into the car do you think if you were white the police would have looked in the car and kept on driving yes yeah uh, especially at, at that time they'll see a white male driving a car a tesla they'll continue going about their business 
because it, it didn't flag up as the car being stolen or yeah. or um, no insurance. Yeah, there was n nothing flagged up. Yeah, it the only thing and. I wasn't with anybody in, in the car. Yeah. So the only thing that I can take from this is the colour of my skin. Yeah. Tell me about For the Voiceless. So um, after the last incident in August, um, I remember um, reading um, some tweets that people were putting forward mm -hmm. saying, I'm only doing this because um, I need money. Um, I'm doing this because um, I'm race baiting and whatever. Why do you read the tweets? I read it because... Um, I never scroll. I like to see what people think in terms of situation like this because I, I know that I'm right, I know where I stand, but I want to understand why people think differently. Mm. So it's, it's just my way of actually understanding and, and coping with what's happening. It doesn't... Um, I don't, once I read it, it's, it, I've read it and I, I screenshot the worst ones and send it off to my lawyer. Mm. But apart from that, it's, I read it and I'm like, once everything is done, mm. I'm going to show you guys that this is how it happened, when it happened, why it happened. You're going to prove, yeah. like, you know, do, will they, care? they won't care, they won't give a shit. They won't, but it, I'm not going to individually at everyone, I'm going to put, you know, the, the hearing, the findings and everything. Mm. And that, if, if they want to read it, they can read it. If not... Tell you a secret, I've done the same thing in my book. <laughs> <laughs> so in my book, I've gone into so much detail into the police stop, stuff that's not sort of in the public domain. Yeah. I've gone into so much detail because all of those people who were saying, she needs to show the video and all of this stuff, um, I just want them to see or know. But I... In my heart of hearts, yeah. I know they won't. Yeah, they, won't. they won't because they'll, they'll be like, okay, well, I guess I was wrong here. Let me go find the next thing to... Um, but, um, but yeah, from there, it's like I just decided I'm not here to enrich myself. Yeah. Um, I've been fortunate enough to have a decent career in, in track. Um, and uh, when I was young, I did some good investments. So I've always had some form of cash. Yeah. Um, so it's not I'm not here to 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 do anything to you know make money and then leave. So I decided I wanted to donate the money that I was getting from um, from the police. And so you've been successful. You yeah. sued the police already. Well, yeah, yeah. We we're in the process of doing four. Right. So it's and like you've been successful. We yeah again we yeah. So it's like I know there's money coming in, but I w if I take this money, it's, it's going to happen again. Right. So what can I do? Right. And that's when um, somebody sent me a message and they said to me, oh, you, the work that you're doing is speaking out for, for those who don't, who don't have a voice. Right. And it was from there where I got the name for the voiceless. Right. And then I just decided um, I would like to donate to a charity. Mm-hmm. I decided um, I would like to actually just start my own. Right, right. By starting my own, people can see the job that we're doing, and I, and I can also see yeah. the, the work that I'm bringing in, the work that I'm changing. People. So this is your life. legacy. Yeah, because I, I I would love to change people's lives in the future. Yeah. It's it's such a wonderful way to turn something so negative. Um, into something positive. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of people who will benefit from that. Yeah, I, I really do hope so, because, again, it's the more you go after them, the less... They'll do it, because they'll yeah. be more accountable. And, uh, and I think that you are a tremendous role model for young black men, you know, everywhere. And just thank you for keeping calm and doing what you do. And thank God you got cameras on your car. <laughs> but um, thank you, Lon, for that. <laughs> uh, and do like come back. We'll come back and we'll catch up on the next stages uh, of this case. And when also the IOPC and the role that they play, uh, we would be investigating that.
a lot more. Yeah. And I hope to tell your story in Parliament because it's it's a classic case of what's going wrong with the system mm -hmm. and how easily a system has inherent bias and how unfair it is and how soul destroying it is. So thank you for staying positive, Ricardo. Thank you. <laughs>